I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we had the pleasure of speaking to Michael Epps, a.k.a. Jake, and Shaman Brown Jr., who plays Papa from The Shy. Man, we had a lot of fun with this one. Um, you guys know that we are day one Shy fans, so it was delightful to speak to them both. A lot of laughs. The young, These young kids, man, they really have grown up. Uh, well into themselves now, but I tell you, you really want to watch this because we had a lot of fun and I think you'll be able to have fun with it as well. Well, I'm Tiffany with The Spot. And I'm Ron Johnson with The Spot. And it's a pleasure to have you both on. Um, as we were saying offline, we've been watching this show from, from day one. We've watched you guys grow up on the show. <laughs> and as I was saying, I might go offline. I remember seeing him at the BMF um, premiere, season one premiere in Atlanta a while ago. And um, just I'm happy to have you both on here. Because one of the things I was going to say, um, like I like everybody on the show. But what drew me to the show initially um, was the kids, y'all, watching y'all's story and watching y'all grow up on on yeah. the show. So I'm just really happy to see you guys here. And I don't like everybody on the show. Duda has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate him as an actor, but right he's got to go. <laughs> I think right. the whole fan base can agree with you on that. Everybody want him go, man. Yeah. He causing too much damage. Way too much. <laughs> you but, to um, yeah, I was getting ready to start with Michael first with my question. Because um, Michael, like, Jake. Jake accepted this money from Zay. Uh -huh. And you know Zay is working with Duda. Y'all know Duda is dangerous. Duda killed Reg. So why yeah. would Jake accept this money from Zay? Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't. He, he, what I can say, what I feel, um, you know, when you, you know, when you, um, reach a certain age, like Jake, he's 18 now. He got his own crib, his own business to come. He got his own money flowing in, you know. So, you know, like once you get to that age and you got so much going on, you kind of think that you know your way around things and you can think mm -hmm. for yourself or you don't need to hear somebody else's advice, you know, you know, and, um, I kind of feel like that was his problem right there. But, um, you know, people always feel like it's another way around something. It'd be a different outcome, you know? And uh, I feel like that's what his mindset was with that. And, you know, he's just learning and growing, you know? Yeah, thank you for the answer. It almost sounds like what uh, Jacob said about Emmett, because I asked him a similar question, and he, he was just, like, young and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. Shimon, this question is for you. You know, it's, it's the old saying that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Now, mm -hmm. let me ask, is that an overstatement for uh, Papa? Because we see your movements that are quite different from where your father had expected you to go. Yeah, you know, I think with Papa, Papa's, the arc he's on right now is very... Papa is a very guidance driven character. Like he's, he hasn't really always had his own drive like he has, but he's always had his friends to kind of be like, you know, help be buffers to certain situations. Like, bro, you should do this. You should do this. Have his father's guidance. Like, you know, son, you should do this or do that. So now I feel like, you know, with his friends splitting apart, you know, his father just passing, it's like he's kind of lost. So, you know, this season we see him finding, you know, a figure of guidance in Pastor Zeke, which may not be the best, but all we can do is have the hands up and pray that it works out for him. Well, I got another yeah. backup question that I'm going to follow with that after Tiffany because uh, that is yeah, my... <laughs> <right there. laughs> yeah, mine was a follow-up on that too because – you know that, um, you know, Papa's father did not like Pastor Zeke, did not appreciate the prosperity message, and Papa's mother doesn't approve either. So I was like, with all of that in the back of his head, why would Papa then 
still go and become an assistant with this man. But all this disapproval. You know, Papa don't know no better. It's just like what Jake said, young and Jacob said, young and dumb. <laughs> like simply, it's like, you know, no, it's a lot of everybody has their own thing going on right now. All the characters have their own lives and are growing as individuals, where you know, as opposed to you know, previous seasons where everybody was so together and kind of you know, we still look out for each other, but now it's like go off and do your own thing. So it's like with Papa, we it was a clip that people brought up. We uh did this uh thing called you know, uh, Rules of the South Side. Mm -hmm. um, a few years back back in season one and, you know papa he kind of always wanted this like people mad at my boy but like he <laughs> always said he wanted the cars and the nice clothes and the money and everything um but you know papa go always speak his opinion even when it might not be the best time to but like he always said you know this is what he wanted so we're gonna see how it play out for him right now you're right i saw that clip I saw that clip and I said he did oh, you know. into existence. He said he wanted a, a mega <laughs> church and money and all of that. Yeah. Okay, Jake, you ready? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Michael, your character, I should say, Jake. Now, it seems as though he truly stepped into his adulthood this season, season six, especially with the aiding of uh, your brother. Uh, Vic, who plays, who plays, uh, who played, uh, shall I say, Luke James, that plays your brother, Vic. Mm -hmm. But how important is it, I think, is it for us to see you stepping into that manhood, going from a Jake who I don't give a fill in the blank to yeah. someone <clears throat> who has reached uh, a certain level of maturity? Um, I'm, I feel like that's. Like that's very important. I'm happy that they um show the growth within Jake's character himself. Cause starting from season one, you see him as this lost child with no guidance, the typical kid around the hood. And as the show goes on, you see him grow and you feel me and like change his life around. And I feel like that's really a story that I'm happy they touched on because you don't really hear that a lot. Like a kid starting on the wrong path and finding his way and later on in life growing up to be successful or whatever it is you want to do, he achieves it. You know what I'm saying? You always hear the story about them going on this wrong path and that's it. And they meet their fate, you know? So I'm happy that um they show that. I got my big brother around to uh, be a man in my life. He teach me how to go about manhood, um, teach me all the things about being a man. And he just keeps my head on the swivel. And I'm, and I'm so happy that they uh, showed the growth within Jake with that. Well, you know, on our show, we, we, we have a segment called Who Gets the Hands and the Game Ball? Uh -huh. And I'm going to have to say with you that uh, giving you the game ball on a couple of occasions, uh, it's just this one incident that we'll talk about later if I have a chance that you, you get the hands, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Michael's character development has come around because I was really impressed with how he was being there for, for Trey, for Vic, and bringing him food and yeah. stuff and looking out for his brother and stuff. yeah. Yeah, maturing. But the first lady, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jay. <laughs> Put you up my knee. Um, I was wondering, I said, so you seem to be pursuing this situation with the, the first lady, and you did come mm -hmm. clean the and y'all still seem to kind of be messing around you and Jimmy. But mm -hmm. I, you know, are we at the end of the road with Jimmy? Honestly, I I don't know. You know, all I can say is you lose them how you get them. You feel me? So I don't, I don't know where it's at at this point. It's just in God's hands. <laughs> I don't know what we are doing, guys. What though? Yeah, because I'm like, you know, y'all, you know, God said I wasn't breaking up. Y'all seem to still be messing around. But then the end of the last last episode. You were trying to get the uh, first lady to come back over there, and the first lady pulled up to the Halloween party. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. what's going on with with Jake and Gemma? Like, I, is this an open relationship? Are they breaking up? Like, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know. It, it might. I, I feel like it's an open relationship, even though we ain't talked about it because she got what she got going on, and I got what I got going on. But she started though. You know, she started whatever this 
thing we want to call. You feel me? So, oh no, it's just the way of the universe. You okay. put what you put out is what you receive, man. So, <laughs> right, not that right, right. <laughs> and speaking of uh, the universe and what you put out is what you receive, mm -hmm. Shannon. Um, mm -hmm. This prosperity <clears throat> preaching that Papa has gotten into, mm. though it seems to be paying off, and let me tip my hat to you because your acting abilities to show that you can be that charismatic preacher, but is that the right place for you though? Is, is that something that you truly want? I know you want the money and the cars and the affirmation, but is this where you, is this how you want it to be? Is this where you want to go? I think that kind of like I was saying earlier, like Papa right now is very lost puppy just looking for a home. And you know, whatever he like, I like money, money good right now. You know, I'm, <laughs> like he's able to take care of things, take care of his mom, you know, buy nicer clothes. You know, back in the past season, Papa had dirty shoes and mm -hmm. only was able to call you feel me, like the little JC Penny type of call, you feel me? <laughs> Uh, but now it's just like, I kind of loved and shout out to Daniel J. Watts who plays Pastor Zeke, you know, meeting him and being able to develop like almost like not the healthiest, like kind of new father sonish kind of relationship. Cause you know, this is Kenya's dad, you know, Papa's old, you know, boo. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy to see it's like almost like the son he, he never had kind of come. And I believe that Pastor Zeke really does care about Papa, but even though Papa might be getting a little too comfortable, I believe he uh, rocks with him, but do I think it's the right move? Nah, from Shaman's perspective, not really. I wish he didn't go, and I, I hope he opens his eyes just like everybody else, but well, hey, all we can do is pray for him. I promise you that's all we can do. <laughs> You got my prayers. <laughs> well, I had a follow-up question for Shaman because there was a moment, it looked like a moment that there was a spark between Papa and Maisha again. It was it was a quick minute. And I was like, wait a minute, is Papa trying to spend the block with Maisha? Yeah. Um, you know, that was a a moment of a moment of weakness, you know, between <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so crazy the, the relationship dynamic between Maisha and Papa is like they started off enemies that turned them into lovers and then you know fell out and right now they're like in a friend place you know with Kev gone it's like a little bit of temptation there but I think it's always going to be that love there um between each other but I don't know y'all just got to keep watching I don't know if we will get back I don't know if they go part ways, but it's always that friendship there between them. Sure. Huh. Okay. Well, Mr. Jake, I'm going to tackle your apparel line for a moment, um, if you don't mind, okay. Michael. Your apparel line seemed to be taken off. I mean, you started a line that looks looked pretty good. I thought you were, you know, well on your way to doing what you want to do and making the money you want to make. But then mm -hmm. you get into bed with Papa. Now, was that strictly to level up your apparel line or are we not missing something with Jake? And Jake seems to be smarter than he appeared to be in that moment of weakness giving in to, to, to Duda. Is there something about Jake we, we, we're not seeing that may be... Um, into this taking of uh, money from Duda, which we know is a <clears throat> a fate of complete. Um, I don't think it's like anything specific with him that we don't know. I think it's just more so of him <clears throat> trying to find his own way through adulthood, you know, and just doing things on his own and and accepting the consequences that come with it, you know, because he obviously knows who they is, he mm -hmm. knows who Duda it. Yes, he knows the dealings that Duda got. I mean, he lived with Duda for a, a small period of time, you know, so he knows Duda like the back of his hand. Mm -hmm. But um, I really think it's just him taking that step into adulthood and wanting to get out here and do stuff on his own and just learn, you know, and without having his brother in his ear or somebody else in his ear, you know, he just want to, you know, 
mm-hmm. find his own way. Okay. I was thinking, um, and I think I may have said this on one of our recaps, that because you did used to live with Jake used to live with Duda, Duda yeah. treated Jake like he was his son. Like mm-hmm. even he almost beat Gemma's dad half to death when he, when Marcus said something sideways about Jake. So I wondered mm-hmm. if part of the reason why um, Jake took the money was maybe he felt like he had a sense of security. Like, yeah, I know who Duda mm-hmm. is, but I do know that Duda has a soft spot for me too. So yeah. maybe... I, I, I kind of, mm, I, I, I wanted to say that at the same time, but I did it because you know how it is. Once you in that field, all relationships go out the window. You know what I'm saying? It's about it's strictly business. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah, you're right. At a point, um, he did like he he. They, I remember him saying like they tried for his son a couple times, but mm-hmm. his wife could yeah. never get pregnant. And right. then we also had that one moment where I called him dad. You know, and it made yes. him feel great. You know, but. I, I also um he he might have kept it in the back of his head, but at the same time he knows what comes with this um with this type of work. So I feel like again it's just him taking that step into adulthood and just willing to accept whatever consequence that come with it. Because you know as you grow up and you no longer a child anymore, you really just want to make your own decisions, you know. And I mm-hmm. feel like that's just kind of where he is right now. I hear that. I hear that. Shimon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Um, Shaman, you're, you're, you know, I can't say losing. He stepped away for a while, but your partner, Kev, you know, you had a great posse. You had, you know, Kev and Jake. And, you know, it seems like you were more of a spiritual mentor to them. And now mm-hmm. that Kev is out of the picture somewhat, could that be one of the reasons that you've kind of slid into the dark side uh, of things? Uh, would he have any more to do with that? Um, not necessarily. I don't feel like Kev, uh, ever contributed to Papa's spiritual side. Mm -mm. Um, You know, I believe that Kevin was definitely a a better tie when it came to, you know, the, the trio, Mm -hmm. because, you know, Papa tried to, as much times as Kevin and Jake them, but it you know, Papa was usually the glue to that. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the way the story is going right now, we just are in a stage of everybody kind of going in their own paths, you know, and that goes for all the kids, you know, for a second, you know, we kind of had Papa being a whole guide for Bakari, you know what I'm saying, getting him on the right path, bringing him into my home uh, with my, my, you know, my family and everything like that. And um, I really think that ever since Papa's dad died he lost his main um focus when it came to you know his religion and his mission and even stay on the right path you know it's and you know we he was the only one you know really out of the trio and out of a, a handful of the cast members that actually had a dad you know he was cracking on Jake you know and yeah. like previous seasons for not having a dad, you know, even though he apologized and everything like that. But it's like, so it's kind of like, how do you go from, it's like his dad was a part of a big, big, big part of his world. So it's like, when you get somebody like that took away from you, it's kind of like, he's a, he's a magnet to anything that even senses like a man of God and a father figure that feels positive like Pastor Zeke, I keep I keep bringing him up because he's just like the not the best replacement for his father, but it's like what he what Papa thinks is the second best because you know it's like his dad told him don't get into the money, don't get fall into this, you know, keep your faith on God and everything on like that. So it's like my dad's gone. This is my you know next best thing that I think is best to a father figure a man of God and I get this a good job that pays well a mega church and it's like it's in his head is too many pros for him and not too many cons but everyone around him kind of sees the cons and it's like like you know kind of stay away but you know Papa Hardhead he ain't gonna listen for real for real yeah so. and, and I guess that's what I actually meant uh, <clears throat> I, I meant because you were the mentor basically of yeah um, and the fact that you did lose your father 
and yeah. the absence of Kev, sometimes that can play a psychological, uh, that has some psychological damage to a person like yourself who, you know, you were used to being in one position and now you have these two losses and I can see the effects that it may have on, on, on Papa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I was going to say about Michael, um, what I noticed was the, um, the character development and the relationship that developed between you and Bakari. When I was lo- watching this <clears throat> last episode and seeing y'all sit there and talk about his book and who could have found out about the book. And I was just like, I remember it used to be on site with these two. It used to be on site. I was like, Gemma lost the baby behind Bakari yeah. and all this stuff. And it was so much animosity. But to see y'all there looking like bros now, um, I you know, like if you can talk to me about that, about how how Jake and Bakari even got to this position and that, that you guys seem to be tight, that he's part of the crew now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it really just happened naturally, you know, and naturally and just us having like that sense of maturity, you know, and I love that they captured that because that shows, like, that really shows that, like, you can really put something behind you and keep and, and keep going with a person, build a bond and a relationship with them, no matter what they did. You son, like, he, yeah, my, he, I'm gonna say he had, but he's the cause to my baby die. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And for me to be able to like accept his apology, forgive him for that, and put it all behind me, and we just start over fresh plate. That's like a that's real maturity, like for and and for our age, like it's grown adult to still holding grudges from 10 years ago, but the smallest thing, you know what I'm saying? So I really, I'm happy that they captured that and they telling our story within that. And I'm just really excited for where they, where they going with me and Bakari. Yeah. I was thinking that perhaps um, you decided to forgive him because Bakari like stood on business when that guy rolled up on you and looked like he was Mm -hmm. going to do something to you and Bakari intervened. And I was like, well, maybe that's when, um, Jake and Bakari decided to, um, you know, squash the beef. Yeah, that too. Yeah, because um, what was it? Um, because ever I'm trying to find out what moment was it. Because after the um, I had the scene with him coming from school and the police brutality. It was mm-hmm. a little bit after that when me and him kind of like found that sense of friendship within us. You see what I'm saying? Before all that even happened, but I really feel like him saving <clears throat> him saving my life is what really was the last piece to put it together for me. Be like, okay, he's a he a cool guy. Let me kind of give him a chance, you know, because he didn't have to do that. He he really mm-hmm. didn't have to do that. Because mm-hmm. even after he was trying to apologize, and all, I'm steady telling him, like, man, look, I don't, don't want to be your friend. I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to skate with you. I don't want to do none of that, you know? So for him to even do that, that also shows his side of his maturity and him trying to build this bond with us and just letting everything go. And because him and Papa is like, this now, you know, so I'm going to have to deal with him regardless, so mm-hmm, I'm going to have mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, we're going to have to find a way to work around this, you living with my man, that's my best friend, you most likely going to have to become my friend due to that fact, so it's like, we just going to have to find a way around this and be one big happy family. Yeah. Yeah, because Shaman, it was something with you too, because Bakari was living with you and then um, both Jake and Kevin was starting to feel a way towards you because they, they were pretty much like, how can you be cool with this dude after everything that happened with Jake and stuff? And so for you to still, you know, stand tall and stand by Bakari, because some people would have might have been like, hey, these are my day ones. They ain't rocking with you. And, and I'm, you know, I'm going I'm to stick with them. Well, you know, Papa always, he always kind of, he tries to see the best in people, you know, like, to be friends with Jake when Jake was a hard-headed kid towing guns and Kevin going through all the <laughs> traumatic stuff he went through. You know, it's kind of like he a kid, like, you know, when he, uh, Jake and Papa got into that argument, like he a, he a child of God that needed shelter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's also the thing, like, Jake and Kevin doing their own thing, and it's like they always kind of had their moment, but it's like nobody ever – has always looked out for Papa. Like throughout the seasons, we never really had that, oh, let somebody say Papa, let somebody do this. And I think that people are always used to the good character always being good. But we got to real like as soon as that moment of, you know, 
being imperfect comes, you know, we want to try to bash them like, oh my God, like no matter how bad it is, but I'm like, we're growing as people, you know what I'm saying? When you don't have that guidance, it's hard to do the right thing. When you, especially when you have nobody telling you for real that what you're doing is really, really wrong. When it sounds more like criticism more than, you know, really trying to help you out for the future, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, Shimon. Um... Yeah. Because I want to know if we're going to see another love interest with you. Uh, I know there's, you know, you're still on the backs of Maisha in a sense, you know, but you're not really doing anything. And one of the reasons I say that is because I think that what I saw in you with these relationships, you could teach some young guys something. No disrespect, Jake, but, you know, he, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you were teaching some brothers some things. So will we see another kind of love relationship, young or old? Is, is that in the uh, in the shadows here? Right now, yeah, I think that Papa's on his, I can't even call it self-love journey, but definitely on his, like, focused on his self-journey right now. Um, but if another, hey, another, <laughs> another lady call, you know, you know, you know, Jake and Kev get them back to back, you know, I'm, I know. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we'll see, we'll see for sure. Yes. Yeah, slow your roll, Jake. Uh, you know, you can learn a lot from this man down there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the first lady, you wow. say that. Yeah, that first lady thing, man. That, yeah, that I was like, that, wow. <laughs> it's we funny gotta... you say that because Papa has always been smooth. Like, I, I think that was what? season three and we had the scene where we had the girls come over and after they left he told also yeah i just gave her a foot rub then we talked about a goal like that's a real play as well Jake, that's a touchdown no matter how that's, yeah, what that's you play. <laughs> yeah papa was always a gentleman with the with the ladies and stuff and yeah. wisdom and stuff and being respectful yeah, yeah. so um it's good, good look, good look. I I wonder if well, it seems like Papa don't care. He um, what's her name? Um, Kayla, the the young lady that you broke up hey. with. Hey. Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Um, Kennedy. Yeah, um, the one that's dating Zay now, which yeah, is Kenya. that's interesting too. Yeah, Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenya. Kenya. Yeah, yeah, Kenya. Like, I'm like, so you're at the church being the assistant and. Papa witnesses this with Zay, like, you know, Papa doesn't feel any type of way. Like, you know, because you know who Zay is associated with, but do that. And this is somebody that you were, you know, dating. Yeah, I think that at heart, Papa really knows that it's bad. And it's so crazy, like, Kenya's, you know, baby father used to be a street guy. Um, so I feel like even though Papa could have been something different for her, you know, old habits, you know, die slow. So it's kind of like, I feel like she leaning towards and, you know, she's not really as tight with her father. So it's kind of like, he does wish the best for Papa. She told Papa to look out, but it's like, again, Papa on the other side, he's like, I did break up with you and she like, he broke my heart. So she really ain't even trying to listen. If Papa was to intervene between the relationship, she she and La La Land doing sneaky links with Zay right now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's her miss right now. But yeah, I man, I don't know. I I hope King okay. I hope that everybody. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to get the, Papa trying to get this money right now. He's trying to get his money right. <laughs> that's where he at. Oh, okay, Michael, I got one more for you because I know we got to wrap up real mm -hmm. soon here. Uh -huh. But uh, do you, does, does I should, should say that, that does Jake understand the consequences of dealing with uh, the first lady? Uh, because, you know, there are always consequences to that kind of, um, shall we say, pleasure trip that you took with the young lady we see now <laughs> that the first lady uh kind of put you aside for a moment she's not feeling you anymore so that yeah. might be just the beginning of something more serious in terms of you know what might happen from all this yeah <clears throat> yeah i don't i don't think jake sees the seriousness in this you know Mm -hmm. I think he's just more focused on 
just having fun, you know, he's <laughs> young and lit, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I think that's just more so what he's paying attention to, but um, I feel like as him and uh, uh, Tatiana, they um they go on and do what they do, I think he starts to realize that, like, oh, this isn't, you feel me, this ain't like I'm just messing with somebody at school, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is really a grown woman, a mm-hmm. married grown woman at that, mm-hmm. so I'm saying, so it's like it, he's starting to realize that there's a lot of different things that's going to come with it. He ain't really going to too much have his way with her, you know? So it's, it's everything is just a learning experience for Jake right now. But I definitely don't think he sees how serious this is and how it can really backfire on him. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, I had one final question for y'all, and then I, we can wrap. I just wanted to, um, to say I know this is season six. You guys got greenlit for season seven. And that's that's amazing. Like I said, we've been watching since day one. And um just wanted to know, like, how has it been working with Lena all these years on on the shot? Um, you know, I love Lena so much, you know, I text her pretty often. That's like big because I've been knowing Lena since I was about 10 years old. Wow. Uh, and to see her journey grow, like we text each other all the time, like whenever I do my other projects and any accomplishments she has, it's like, she's a great mentor. She's a great person, super chill, super down to earth from the crib. Uh, <laughs> and she she's created something beautiful. And I, I always, and I'm always gonna be appreciative for the platform that she's given me to grow for the character that she's allowed me to play that she created. Um, and I, I ain't got nothing but love for, for real, for real. Like I said, that's big sis. And she's a great leader. Whenever it is something she wants us to bring out, she makes sure we have the tools to, you know, bring it to us regardless if it's something big or even if it's a small scene with a big moment in it. Um, she's always, you know, giving her ideas and, it's always a part of it and she she's a part of every table read and you know she's only one phone call away which I love you know you don't always get that so shout out to shout out to Lena man mm-hmm. I like this. yeah I definitely want to piggyback off that she she's definitely like a big sister and a mentor like he said and um forever grateful for um the show you know what I'm saying um this um and the pedestal she put us on uh my favorite thing about Lena is like Air sees that she's throwing a new challenge at you, you know? And, uh, and she, she, she's going she gonna to pull you out that comfort zone. She's going to pull you out that shell. But we're going to have fun doing it, and we gonna, it's going to be safe, and, and we're going to kill it. It's going to look good, too. So um, it's definitely been a blessing working alongside Lena, and uh, I'm happy we're still going strong. And before we go, i got to say this. You guys are my two of my favorite uh, actors. You have a lot of depth, uh, and I'm so happy to see that there's a season seven coming up because I really can't wait to see what the two of you <clears throat> into this coming season and season seven. I know it's going to be a blast, and if Lena has anything to do with it, you know, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat waiting for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, show, show I, I can't wait for it to air. <laughs> I can't yeah, wait, I can't wait to see the season finale oh, for y'all, oh, too. Oh, the season finale is going to be on fire. I know it will be. Yeah, we mm-hmm. got we got we got TV on lock right now. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV y'all do, lock. y'all do, mm-hmm. y'all do. It's several generations watching the show, and I, I say this all the time. Like, I, my son watches the show, I watch the show, and my <laughs> father watches the show. So yeah, yeah. So it's 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 community love here. So um, definitely we appreciate being able to talk to you guys today. We're so proud of y'all. I said, we've been watching from season one, day one, watching y'all grow up and stuff. And, you know, happy to have all of the shy cast on here and stuff. But we definitely was like, we got to we gotta get the kids on here. <laughs> so, that's what we got to talk to Papa <laughs> and, and, and Jake. And I would love to talk oh. to Kevin one day and stuff. We did talk to Myesha and Gemma um, oh, wow. last, last season mm-hmm. with um, with Jason right. Weaver. Yeah. And, uh, so... I'm um, very happy to talk to you guys today. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us. And giving us of course, that. Of course. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. 
All right, we're gonna let you guys go. Have the rest of your day back. Definitely. All right, y'all have a good one. Make sure y'all enjoy some of this beautiful weather. You too. (laughs) You too. Thank you so much. See you. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, baby, tell me all your reasons for you leaving. Yeah, I kind of feel betrayed, it's feel like treason You ain't ruined for the whole team, it's my season Switching out the blue now, while I've been greening Oh, you can stand now, I stand now I got all these people on me on the man